I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, this is a new week and hey, the month of August ends in a few days time, in three days time actually, because the 1st of September is going to be on a Thursday. Now, listen, I don't know what God has planned for you for the month of August and how well you have received all of God's plan. But believe me, if you will align yourself consciously today, miracles can take place before the end of the month. And that's what I'm believing God for. And I join my faith with yours right now, even as we call forth our daily bread. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive even as I demand my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Say this, I receive everything that I ought to have received for the month of August. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now you know all months we've been talking about being fruitful and being productive. Now, there's a message I preached recently that I just felt it's important I share the, that message exactly the same way I preached it. So I'm going to be playing that message for you today, tomorrow, and next tomorrow. This thing, today is going to be a great day. Open your heart as the Lord bless you with these words. When you really decide to walk in the truth, the first real enemies you find are the people who you think should know better, are the people who you think are your brethren. And it's simply because many people have not truly understood truth. Sad to say, even preachers, many preachers don't really know the truth. And many times we just receive and then we download. Receive from where? Not necessarily from God. We receive from men. And then what we have been taught forms our reasoning. And when those things that form your reasoning, it has a way of affecting your knowledge and then your expression. A man, for example, who believes so much in the power of demons to limit a man, you'll be amazed that when he takes his Bible to read, everything he sees, he will interpret it from that standpoint. See, because the light that is in him is not the true light. Are you following me? You remember Jesus said, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, when he said, if the light that is in you is in darkness, you know, many people just think he's talking about fake pastors. Not necessarily. He, said, he just said, made a simple statement. If the light that you carry is darkness, meaning you were carrying darkness thinking you were carrying light. So he wasn't talking about bad people. He was talking about people who think they are the good people. Praise God. So he said, if the light that is in you is now darkness, how great is the darkness? Why did he say how great is that darkness? It's because everything you are going to interpret in life will be from the place of darkness. Are you getting it? Because you think you're carrying light. But the light is darkness. Simple illustration. Those days, when you go to a boutique to buy a dress, you know, most boutiques in those days, these days, I don't know if they still do it. Come to think of it, when last they enter a boutique? <laughs> Praise God. You know, yeah. Those days, you enter a boutique, they have this 
um, purple neon lights. You, you understand what I'm talking about? And then the whole place is just looking, the atmosphere, the ambience is just, and then you pick up a shirt like, wow, you like the shit. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You, you like this dress, you know, like, wow. And then you take it home. You may even try it inside there, it's your size. Whoa, glory, you know. And then you take it home. Then the day you decide to wear it, you put it on like, no, this is not the, this is not the shirt I bought. This is not the dress I bought. Ah, did they change the color? See, you were conditioned to use a dark light in that place. And then you made your decision based on that dark light. And you made that decision and took that decision out. But it was done in that dark light. Now you get what I'm saying? So now in your heart, you felt you have gotten the perfect dress for the occasion you're thinking about. Only for the day of that occasion, you wear that dress and you realize, no, it's not the perfect color. But that's today is the day. So what do you do? Now that's how when the light that is in you is not the true light. You will make decisions based on darkness. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you will think you have it all made on the day that you're supposed to manifest. On the day you're supposed to show forth. You now realize that day that it is not the right decision you have taken. So that's why Jesus said, if the light that is in you is darkness. Now that's why the, the only way, the only way you can truly say you have carried the light or you have received the light is when you receive it directly from him. If you receive it from him, no matter how sincere and honest the man may be, it may just not be the true light. Give me John chapter 1 from verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. Now, I want you to understand this, because this is where the true light starts from. It says, in him was what? Life and the life was the light of men. It was life. It is the life that is now what? Light of men. Are you getting what I'm saying? First, it was a life. Now, the life that was in him, it is what gives men, it is what became light for men. Now, sometimes you take your Bible say, look, I am looking for light. And then you begin to study, you begin to read, you carry books, you carry Hebrew, you carry Greek, you carry all the books you can get. I say, what are you doing, man? I must get light on this thing. Now, that's the first step to darkness. You see, because to assess the true light. Now, give me the next verse. And I'll show you. I'll come back to this. Let me show you something. First. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Next verse. There was a man. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Go on. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Are you following? Are you following? John came to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Go on. He was not that light. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, why did he... He was talking about the word, right? Are you following what I'm saying? He was talking about the word. Then he now says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Are you following? Then he stops there and says, there was a man sent from God. He's talking about a man. Whose name was John? This man, John, came to bear witness of that light. And says he was not that light, but was sent 
to bear witness of that light. You know why he was using John? Because John also lived the life. Are you following? John lived the life. So now, he had to tell them that, look, there was a man, his name was John. His job was to come and be a witness of that light. He was not that light. Telling you that the light is actually a person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, he used John because, so that to clear your mind that the person he is talking about who is the light is not John. Go on, next verse. It says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Which light is he talking about? The light he was talking about before. The light is now telling you that John was not that light. Now, let's go back to that verse 4. Is it verse 4 now? In him, in him was life. In the word was life. And the life was the light of men. Telling you something. That how do I assess this light? You cannot assess this light until you see the life. Are you following me? Are you following me? You cannot assess this light until you see the life. Because the light is in the life. Which life is he talking about? The life of Jesus. The life of Christ. Now you know of course verse 14. Verse 14. Give me verse 14. It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Now letting you know that the one he is referring to, who is the word that was from the beginning, who is who in him, in this word was life, letting you know that he's talking about a person. And that person, of course, we all know he's talking about who? Jesus. He was talking about Jesus. And now he says, it is Jesus that gives life to every man that comes into the world. Is that not amazing? Meanwhile, when Jesus came, there were already men in the world. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? There were already men in the world. But then he says, it is Jesus. Give me that verse 9, right? That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Hey, if we're talking about Jesus, Jesus came when there were plenty of people in the world already. So if it's the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world, then how then he came now? So what about those people that came before him? Is it that they don't have light? Now that's why he told you that he was there from when? The beginning. And you remember I've told you something before that from the beginning of things, God had ordained for Jesus to come. Jesus didn't come because Adam and Eve sinned. No. From the beginning, it has been ordained for him to come. Why? Because every man came through him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Every man came through him. And two, every man he is the one that God ordained from the beginning, from the foundation of the world, to actually give life to men. So his ministry was to give life to men. Right from the beginning. He was a priest that was to hand over life to men. So when God says, oh, in the garden there was a tree called the tree of life. Now, the job of Jesus was to come and at the time he was supposed to come to administer the tree of life to man. Now, you, you know, he say the tree of life to man. So is it that everybody will line up and he will not giving them fruits one after the other? No. Now, you see, that's the problem. For example, Adam and Eve saw that tree. God says, don't eat of this tree. The day you eat of the tree, you will surely die. He told them that. And then, Adam and Eve, 
being led or being having a conversation with the devil. The devil said, hey, it's a normal tree. That's what, that's what the devil told her. It's a normal tree. God was just deceiving you. Because even Satan could not understand why God will hide the knowledge of good and evil in a tree. He couldn't understand it. So even him was trying to inquire. This is a new development. I've been here a long time. You know, you know Satan has been in that garden for a very long time. Some of you don't know that. Praise God. He, was, he has been there before Adam was created. He was there. So suddenly, oh, read your Bible. The Bible talks about, read Ezekiel. Say, he, he, thou has been there. There has been in Eden. Talking about Lucifer. So now, he sees God remaking everything after he has been cast out. He sees God remaking everything. You no, know, some people think Lucifer was an angel. He was not an angel. Lucifer was a man. He was a man. He was the first man that God gave authority over the earth to. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. So there were, there were men that existed before Adam. It's all in scriptures. That's not what we're talking about today. But just keep that knowledge somewhere. That's why I say come for Monday Bible study. <laughs> Praise God. So now he, he was there. So now, God reworks the Garden of Eden. And then, he knows all the trees in the Garden of Eden. Lucifer knows. He knows everything in that garden. God did not create anything new. He did it. And then suddenly, he makes man. And Lucifer was just there wondering, what's God up to? And then he gives them an instruction. He said, this tree is a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Lucifer looks at the tree and wondered how God will hide the knowledge of good and evil in a tree. It was an amazing thing to him. He, he searched all his knowledge about God. It couldn't add up. So when he went to Eve, he didn't go to Eve like, I want to tempt her to disobey God. No, he too was curious. He too was curious. Hey, has God said you should not eat of this tree? He said, ah, God said we should not touch it too. And God, then he said, ha, ah, see, let me tell you the truth. God is playing a juror on you. He knows that if you eat of this tree, you will become like him. And he doesn't want that to happen, so he's deceiving you. So Eve thought to her, he himself was wondering to see what will happen when they eat that tree. He was wondering. And the same thing, he was wondering, how, come, how can the tree of life be in a tree? How can life be in a tree? He was wondering. Because he knows that God operates by words. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's who he knows God to be. Words. No man has seen God at any time. So suddenly, life is in a tree. It doesn't add up. So he said, let me start from here first. When this one works, then we'll go to the next one. So the Bible says, Eve, hearing him, looked at the tree. And that's when it dawned on her that this thing is a normal tree. The Bible says she looked at the fruit, that it was good for food. You know how before now, I ah, don't even, you know, Adam said, Eve, hey, see, pass this way. <laughs> don't cross this border. I don't want anything to happen to you. Just, and then suddenly she looks at the tree again and said, come to think of it. It's a normal fruit. That's what the Bible says. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she saw it. Didn't she know before? She was blinded by the word that she received from her husband. You know what I mean by blinded? So, say that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate and gave also to her husband. I mean, she ate it and swallowed it. Like, I don't know. See, there's a wrong teaching that say the moment they ate that fruit, their eyes opened. And then they now realize that they were naked. It's not true. It's not true. If that was true, 
it would have been automatic the moment Eve ate the fruit. Do you understand? Something would have happened to her that Adam would have known immediately that, ah, avoid this thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? But she ate the fruit and nothing happened. Did I become wise? I'm still normal. Adam! Honey! Adam! What do you say this tree will do? This fruit will do? Ah, what have you done? No, really. I ate it. And I'm normal. Uh, you know how it is? You have given an instruction because you, you, have, you have thought that this instruction is life instruction. And somebody has broken it and the person is still okay. But you see, Adam knew the truth. Because Adam had related with God. So he knew that the word that God gave to them was true. That if we eat this tree, something will happen. He believed God. But now his wife has eaten it. And so when Adam looked at her and said, okay, say, eat it now, eat it. Could God have lied to me? So he took it and he ate. And he too was normal. Nothing happened. See, it was Satan that watched them, looked at them, and nothing happened. Ah, I know the trick. You see, Satan was wise. Understand? He said, I know. Now, I told you he was curious to know how can God hide this thing in a tree? It doesn't look like God. So when they now ate it, he watched and watched. Nothing. They were normal. He said, uh -huh. I know. Now, they have started obeying me. They have started obeying me. So he came with another lie. You know him now. He's the father of all lies. Because God corrupted his wisdom. The moment God corrupted his wisdom, everything he brings is opposite to the wisdom of God. Now that's why he's called a liar. Every suggestion he gives to you. If Satan comes here and says, this pulpit is not here. <laughs> it becomes a lie. Now it doesn't become a lie because the pulpit will disappear. God will say, ah, he has to remove it so that it will be like, no, that's not the battle that is going on. It will become a lie because the purpose or the wisdom of God concerning this pulpit, are you get what I'm saying? It's if Satan now tells you that there is a pulpit here, the reason you must not listen to his wisdom is because if you follow that wisdom, say, actually there is a pulpit there, and then you begin to follow that wisdom, it will lead you to death. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will lead you to death. You remember the woman, Paul, and the woman that the, the sorcerer or the lady that got Paul and Silas into trouble. You remember that story? You know, this woman was there telling people she was, she was like a prophet, you know. They go to consult her. They pay money and they consult her. She tells them what's going to happen. And People believed because they saw results. Are you following what I'm saying? Then suddenly, when Paul and Silas came to town and they were on their way to pray, suddenly this woman began to proclaim, these are the men that have come to show you people the way of life. These are the men that have come to show you people. The Bible says she did this for many days. Book of Acts. She did this for many days. Then one day, while they were going, she started again. These are the men. Now, you ask yourself, is that a wrong thing to say? If it's today, the men of God will go back and say, Guy, who was that girl? Ah, she's a witch doctor. Ah, you mean a witch doctor? Ah, man, the anointing we carry is so strong that even the witch doctor was recognizing and declaring, even the demon was announcing our presence. That's the testimony. You understand what I mean? That's a mega testimony. But you see, <laughs> Satan was only lying. What do you mean he's lying? 
But they, were there no men of God? They were men of God. Were there, they, didn't they come to show the people the way of life? They were, they've come to show the people the way of life. But here is the problem. Now she tells them, these men have come to show you the way of life. And now the people will begin to like, okay, mm -hmm. let's look at them. Let's follow them. Let's go for their meetings. If it's today, Paul and Silas will print their banner and go and put it in that very spot. Meeting venue. So, 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 park. <laughs> Dates and time of meeting. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, every day when we pass there, she announces. So let's let the people know. Or they'll carry fly and go and be distributing in that place. This is where we're meeting. Come, come for the meeting. You've heard. So you've heard. Even the demon is telling. Now, here's the trick. That's why I said, when he speaks, he's speaking a lie. Now, here's the deal. They go for their meetings. Things happen. Miracles happen. They see the power of God. And Paul and Silas, they don't reside in that village. When they finish their assignment, what happens? They will go. Now, the moment Paul and Silas goes, then she starts her ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is it not me that told you that those men will show you the way of life? Didn't they show you the way of life? They did, they did. Now, come and listen to me. Are you seeing the lies now? Are you following me? Are you seeing the oppression of lies now? That's how it functions. So when Satan tells you, no matter how true it looks, the agenda is a lie. So Paul and Silas, on this particular day, walking and she started her, and we hear that said, because we are naked. Now the word they said to God was not the same word that God, because when they realized that they were naked before, before they ate that fruit, when they realized they were naked, God said, it's fine, because naked means plain. Naked means as just as I am. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's, it's good. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, so there's nothing to hide. So we are perfect. We are good. That's what they knew as naked. So they were not ashamed. Why should they be ashamed? They are in their perfect state. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, Satan comes and said, no, 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 no. He now brought a different meaning of what naked is and gave them that word. And they believed him. And because they believed him, now they heard the voice of God coming. Somebody is coming. They went to hide. So they said, we heard your voice and we hid ourselves. Why? Because we are naked and God didn't say who made you naked that's not what he said what did God say who told you so God knew that they have listened to another person are you following me are you following me he knew automatically uh -uh. you have stepped into what I did not teach you so you have started listening to someone else. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.